We now put the spotlight on an entrepreneur and popular YouTuber who became a household name during the COVID-19 pandemic. He's a highly successful content creator on social media with over 1.45 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. He's also a best-selling author. His book, Do Epic Shit, that came out last year, has seen a print run of over 200,000. His new book, Get Epic Shit Done has just come out. You guessed it right. I'm now joined by thought leader Ankur Variku. Ankur, welcome to Startup Street. Now, before we talk about your second book, I want you to throw some light on your journey. In 2019, at the age of 39, you stepped down as the CEO of Nearby, which was a deal marketplace company that shot you to fame in India. Your tenure ended abruptly as the company was sold in a distress sale to, Paytm, uh, to payment giant Paytm. I want to understand how a PhD dropout, whose list of failures is probably longer than his tallest success story, became one of India's successful internet marketer. Your transformation into a content creator, is it by accident? Uh, firstly, thank you so much for having me, Shruti, and for the very, very warm introduction. Uh, my foray into content creation is certainly at the level that it is today by accident. While I've been creating content for several years now, I've been maintaining a blog for 17 years now. I've been creating content on LinkedIn for 10 years. My YouTube channel started in 2017. But almost all of the success that has come through has come in the last two, two and a half years. And I think it was just being at the right place at the right time where the pandemic was there. People had a lot of time on my hands. I had a lot of time on my hands and things just came together. All right, Anko, you talk about failure openly. Now, what makes you stand out as a content creator? You create mentorship and motivational content for 18 to 24-year-olds, Indian consumers. Your videos are a mix of life lessons on business mistakes, personal finance, investment and career advice. Hey, you, your question gave away the answer, Shruti. I, I think what makes me stand out is the fact that I openly speak about my failure. Uh, at the age of 42, I've had such a varied set of experiences as a startup founder, as someone who dropped out of my PhD, as somebody who also had a consulting gig, made lots of mistakes with my money, with relationships, with career, that I had these stories to tell. And when youngsters who were largely in the age of 20, 18 to 24 year olds uh, lost, confused, uh, overwhelmed with the choices and opportunities they're facing, uh, saw or heard a 42 year old go through his mistakes, in some way they related to that because they saw themselves making those or on the at the cusp of making them in the beginning itself. So the relatability was, was very high. I wasn't a 26 or a 30 year old uh, just transferring some secondary knowledge and making it seem like it was primary. This was my own life that, that made it happen. And I'd like to believe that that was one of the biggest things. All right, Ankur, you know, in December last year, you published your first book, Do Epic Shit. In typical Variku fashion, you dedicated the book to all the failures and roadblocks in your life. What is different about your new book, Get Epic Shit Done? You've written about handling office politics, how to find a passion, uh, dealing with criticism and a lot more. What target audience are you catering to? The, the bigger essence is Do Epic Shit, my first book, got you to think. It was a very provocative book. It wasn't something that was prescriptive, but Get Epic Shit Done will make you act. So it comes with these 36 frequently asked questions around life. And these are questions that I get asked on a daily basis. And I realized that if one were to compile the responses and share it in a conversational format between a teacher and a student, it will land well on people. And should they have any of those questions hitting them in their life, they can always go back to that chapter, read it, and within three or four pages, hopefully have some direction to pursue and leave the rest of the book. So this book is not a one-time read. It's something that you can chew upon for years and years until you get to the point where you have your own answers to these questions. All right, uh, Uncle, like you said, you know, you speak to lakhs of young people every day. What does India's Gen Z want? What makes them stand apart from previous generations? I think the biggest thing is their audacity of their ambition. I do not believe any generation prior has had such a bold outlook towards how much they want to do, how soon they want to do it, and why do they want to do it. Uh, and I think it's a combination of the world going global. They now recognize they're not just a domestic workforce, but a global workforce. They now recognize that talent is sought after. And if they were to prep themselves, they would be in demand everywhere. And they also recognize 
that they don't have to necessarily stick to just one profession or just one stream for the rest of their lives. They can dabble with a lot, discover a lot, explore a lot, and that sets them up on this really nice, exciting journey that they have lived in their 20s or are going to live in their 20s, which is very different from perhaps how you and I lived our 20s. So it's a very set, yes. settled kind of a mode, uh, but they don't want to get settled and, and that sets them apart uniquely. All right, uh, Ankur, before we wrap up, let's do a quick rapid fire. So brace yourself. My first question to you is pick your favorite social medium to connect with people. Uh, you know, what would that be and why? I think it'll be Instagram because it allows for a lot of connectivity with people through live sessions and stories and, of course, reels and everything. Uh, so it'll be Instagram. All right. Uh, next up, your three mantras for successful work life. Uh, number one, please optimize for your happiness as against your earning because that ultimately is the longer play. Number two, always be kind around people because if you're kind, life becomes very easy. And number three, don't question the fact that you are not enjoying yourself. Don't question whether you are in the right place or not. If you're not, please go ahead and make a change around that because work-life balance is not so much about you going back to a life outside of work and thanking God for that. It is about you enjoying your work just as much as you would enjoy your life other side. Absolutely. And wonderful thoughts there. Next up, you know, your biggest learning so far. One of my biggest learnings, Shruti, so far has been that uh, this came from my first manager and he remarked and it stayed with me. If I can't trust you, it doesn't matter how smart you are. Uh, and that hit me like a <laughs> bullet because it's it just so true. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how hardworking you are, or any such thing. If the opposite side does not trust you with your work, you're always going to be one shade lower. Uh, so build trust and that comes through consistent showing up every single day. Okay. Who does Ankur Variko look up to? Ah, uh, uh, Ankur Variku looks up to the Ankur Variku who will be 10 years from now because I firmly believe that I'll continue growing. All right, one final question. Startup founder or content creator, what is more challenging? Oh, 100% startup founder. I don't think there's anything more laborious emotionally, physically than, than that is. All right, Ankur, many thanks for joining us on Startup Street and wish you the very best with the new book and, of course, with all your future plans once again.